Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. Today, we're diving into an intense journey of a man rebuilding his life after an unexpected betrayal. Brace yourselves for a story of courage, resilience, and hard-won wisdom. Wife cheated. Next steps? Hello. I've been a lurker here for a while, trying to process infidelity in my life. Long story short, wife and I have been married eight years together, a few years longer total, and have two small kids. This year has been tough, and we have had our arguments, but nothing that I would ever think that would push my wife to cheat. Anyways, I noticed her lately being distant and being uncommunicative, and decided to confront one evening. At that time, she said that she was not happy and couldn't feel a spark anymore. At first, I freaked out on myself, thinking I was being a non-attentive husband, truthfully in an issue. However, the next day, I caught a very strange message on her phone that was extremely lovey-dovey. I took a look and then found my wife was messaging a man for a long time with lots of I love yous and plans for a future together. Effing destroyed. Anyways, taking the advice of many threads on here, I didn't confront initially. I actually read as much as I could, contacted a couple lawyers for advice, one now on retainer, and got my head on straight and calm. I confronted my wife a couple days ago, calmly and asked if she was having an affair. And after a couple of minutes, she admitted everything. Long story short, it's been going on for six months and she claims that's the deepest emotional connection ever. Complete BS, but whatever. To end it all, I gave my list of boundaries, cut off contact, marriage counseling, etc. The thing that I think is the final nail of an honest attempt to reconcile is she got extremely aggravated with cutting off contact, especially when I told her to do it in front of me and even insisted to see him one last time. For closure, I effing held my ground and told her if he is so important, pack a bag and go live with him, to which she backed off, but not before she told me I was a controlling a-hole. Anyways, she sent me a text this morning and showed me, but my spidey senses seem to think she will try a different means of communication. I'm thinking there is no hope, and I honestly don't want it at this point, but I just wanted to be able to tell my kids in 20 years, at least I tried. We have marriage counseling tomorrow, but I'm thinking it's time to file before wasting any time or grief. I'm cautious to move too fast because of my kids, but is this the right way to do it? It's clear that you're trying to protect your own interests as well as the well-being of your children. That's commendable, and it's important to remember that you're doing the best you can in a situation that no one would ever wish to be in. While the decision to file or not is a deeply personal one, your instincts to not rush because of your kids is well-founded. Nevertheless, it's also crucial to consider your own mental and emotional well-being. Reconciliation is a two-way street, and it doesn't seem like your wife is entirely on board, given her reluctance to cut off contact. Update. The past few weeks, simply put, have sucked, but it's given me time for a lot of soul searching and thinking. As an update from the previous thread, the wife and I did attend some counseling after the initial confrontation, and I will say this particular counselor has been very good about listening to both of us, and not assigning blame or anything like that, and helping to navigate our new reality. She has also helped to uncover some structural issues in our relationship, and while that doesn't at all excuse my wife's behavior, it's helpful at least knowing for a future relationship and not repeating the same mistakes. As also mentioned in the thread, my wife's initial reaction to my boundary to cut off contact with the affair partner appeared to go unheeded, and I did catch some small messages between them before she completely went dark with her chat, logs, and phone. After seeing that, I decided to file, and she was served a few days ago, and in parallel, I decided to have a heart-to-heart -heart with my father-in-law, as we are super close, and I needed to prioritize the support for our kids versus our relationship, as I could see my wife wanted to sweep this under the rug. Needless to say, my wife was initially extremely upset. Her fantasy was blown up, but our therapist did talk it through with her, from my point of view, on why this needed to happen, and I think she is starting to realize the consequences of her actions and start to see there are real things that are going to be lost. From here on out, I'm just trying to process this new life ahead and the huge change in my identity, from a husband, father, to something else. Same with her. I will say, since I filed, my wife was immediately shocked when I dropped that on her and she has been very emotional these past few days. I honestly think she thought I would never be able to walk away. I have kept her at arm's length, but I have seen a distinct change in her, and on a positive note, we have talked more. Kept our conversation civil and focused on our shared priorities, children mostly. I've made it very clear to her that she left a huge wound on me and that she has to do a heavy lifting to help repair and give me space and time if I can ever begin to forgive. I'll say it again and again, her actions are the most selfish, self-centered, horrible thing you could do to a person, but I have not lost sight that we still need to raise our children 
and that it is my focus as I navigate how I will move to the next phase of my personal happiness. I wanted to thank everyone for the previous comments and insight. I'm honestly proud that I found the strength to not wallow in self-pity, anger, or sadness, and was able to make the right moves to retain my dignity and look forward to the bright future. I honestly don't know all the next moves and my feelings are constantly in flux, but I'm starting to feel some inner peace. Thank you all again. It's apparent that you've undergone a tremendous amount of personal growth and introspection over the past few weeks. You're absolutely right. Your wife's actions are selfish and unjustifiable. However, the grace with which you've handled the situation and your dedication to your children's well-being is admirable. I'm glad to hear that your therapy sessions are helping and that you're being open about your pain and your needs moving forward. The journey to healing is seldom straightforward or easy, but it seems you're navigating it with a level head, a clear focus, and an open heart. This isn't just about retaining your dignity. It's about preserving your own peace of mind, and it's clear you're doing just that. Update Hi everyone. I posted recently about my experience. Many, many thanks to the replies and DMs to help me get through it, and I'm well on my way and I'm feeling good lately. The original post is below, and there's another post talking about my decision to serve my soon-to-be ex-wife. We'll link later. Anyways, I'm in the post-serving part and working closely with my counsel. What I'm looking for is if any betrayed spouses here took advantage of the affair fog to get better divorce terms and how you pulled it off. My soon-to-be ex-wife is clearly deep in the fog, still seeing contacting affair partner, which at the moment, I haven't bothered her since it's a good distraction. What did people get agreements on that were unexpected? Any advice is greatly appreciated on how to move through this phase and also to keep her off balance is also helpful. Besides Grey Rock and 180, I've been going out much more unexpectedly and not divulging details of my activity. The community has some advice. Dim Tim from Q says, You draw up what looks to be the most advantageous agreement possible. Show it to your lawyer and get them to make it realistic, but still very much to your advantage. And dangle the, let's do this quick so you can be with honey buns and I'll be out of your hair, line to her. Director 20530 says, My ex left me for a wealthy affair partner. She was convinced the affair partner was going to leave his wife and marry her. My ex was not interested in my house, purchased with first wife, my retirement account, or my stock portfolio. She wanted half of our savings account, and that was it. I wanted to blow up her relationship with the affair partner by telling his wife about the affair. But my attorney told me to play nice until the fog lifted or until the divorce was finalized. My ex withdrew 60K from savings, and she was gone. Update. Advice. Gray rocking during divorce proceedings. Hi everyone. I posted a few threads about my ongoing saga, but the abridged version is wife cheated. I caught her. She gave me the I love you, but not in love. An affair partner is the greatest emotional connection ever. BS. And has trickle truth. Gaslit. Everything to the script. I then proceeded to drop papers on her. And, well, here we are a few weeks later. Long story short now, in the post-serving phase, and having to cohabitate for now since I want to spend as much time with my children as possible. I'm now in a separate room too, so this has helped me begin to get that distance. I implemented the gray rock with my soon-to-be ex-wife, generally try not to be interested in any discussion, but have to fake it a little, especially with kids around. They're still small, but try to be upbeat as they can since a lot. I'm also not making myself available in the evening, going out with friends, working out, whatever. Any other advice on how to best handle the situation? It's a delicate balance. I want as much bonding time with my kids and have sucked it up for family dinners and whatnot. Any other do's and don'ts? Update. Wife cheated. Next steps part 5. Best advice. Hey everyone. I've made a few posts prior and to those that don't know the story, it's simply wife cheated, greatest emotional attachment ever, love you but not in love, etc. I threw down papers and well I'm just over one and a half months of D-Day and working like hell to move on. The purpose of this post is not for any update. All I can say is the process is ongoing and I will give the appropriate update at the right time, likely a while. My only request is for anyone that has gone through the process, please share any good advice, lessons learned, things you would have done differently or good things to know. The advice in the previous posts have been super helpful and those that have reached out in other ways have been incredible, just reaching out in case there is more that can help. Cranach has some advice. Be prepared and have someone of your support system on quick dial is the only real advice I can give you. It will take a bit of time until this whole process will be done and a multitude of things can happen in that time. Most likely stuff like her telling people that she cheated because of you, the fog of her affair ended and she asked for a second chance, or she tries to hurt you in some kind of way. There are many things that can happen until the process is done, but for most of them, 
you can be prepared by having a go-to reaction when you see her. A clear way to behave when interacting with her. At best, Grey Rock. And knowing who you can reach out to when you feel troubled. Be consistent in what you do and no matter what she says, does, or whatever, never make a decision on the spot. Tell her that you will think about it and that you will reply in three days in case that she does ask you for something. Update. She cheated, but I'm made to feel like the a-hole. Hey everyone, my story can be found in my post history, but long story short, as always, wife cheated, found her greatest emotional turd ever, I threw down papers, and the train is riding to D-Town. Just wanted to get some stories on how folks dealt with in-laws, friends, etc., making you out to be the bad guy. I did get the jump after filing and told some of the in-laws, my family, and some friends, but I didn't broadcast too wide as I wanted to keep some things quiet. That being said, I know my soon-to-be ex likely threw down her side, and well, I'm getting some cold vibes from a lot of her family and some other folks. I know blood is thicker than water, but it sucks when your close family turns their back despite being a good dad and husband, and the wife is being an immoral turd. Did people start to see stuff later on and change their opinion? Did you just stop caring and move on? Some opinions from the community on the question. Desert Rat 1000 says, Her side of the family is going to be X pretty soon, so I'd stop worrying about it. You won't have to interact with them anymore. Just keep your proof at hand, so if called out, you can show it. Brooke Trout 523 says, My soon-to-be ex-wife actually came clean and told her family about the affair and the fact that she was leaving me for the other man. Her parents haven't spoken to her since, four months, but have instead had my back totally. They see how much it has hurt me, and they really do consider me one of their own after 30 years, as well as the effect on their grandchildren, my adult sons. Frankly, I think my mother-in-law likes me better than she does her own daughter anyway. Her siblings are waffling on the fence, wanting the whole family dynamic to go back to normal, but they know full well she's a manipulator and liar at this point. If her partner is not welcome at family functions. Even down the road, I will let my character, which they should all know after so long, stand on its own. My sons don't have much of a relationship with her in the wake of this, and one of them has only spoken to her once, and it was pretty quick. They've lost respect for her, and have said they will never be in the presence of her affair partner. They know who he is. Another thought from Easy Ad 1096 This is not unusual. When a husband cheats, the most common reaction is, he's lying, cheating, worthless piece of crap that betrayed his wonderful wife. But when a wife cheats, the most common reaction is, I wonder what he did to mistreat her so badly that she ended up having to turn to someone else. A pure double standard, of course. The most in vogue reasoning that wives who cheat use today is that their husbands were emotionally distant, unavailable, abusive, and everybody just nods their heads in understanding. Update. Wife cheated saga. The unexciting conclusion. Hi everyone. As of today, there's some closure coming my way in my saga that started over this summer, and I've been posting getting advice from everyone here. I just want to start off and thank this community for the incredible support and advice, especially to those who privately messaged and offered words of wisdom along the way. This is a crappy process to go through, especially when close family is far away. It sucks to be alone with your thoughts, but there is some wisdom and introspection to gain from this. For those that need a recap, one of the many threads is below, but the TLDR is my wife cheated and tried to hide it. I found out, realized there was no hope as she was deep in the fog with the fair partner and immediately filed on her. Wife cheated. Next steps part two. Surviving infidelity. Anyways, the past few months have been frosty but relatively drama free as the Sunni and I separated our lives in the house but still did things for our children. The discovery and mediation process proceeded pretty quickly. We agreed on 50-50 for our kids along with schedules and holidays and since it's a no-fault state, asset division was by the book with some give and take. I won't go into details too much at this time, maybe another post in the future, but I will be finding a place soon for a fresh start. The final final conclusion is on the horizon, but for the most part, the D is complete. As for my advice from this whole fiasco, I learned a bunch of things. 1. Don't bother with a pick-me dance. I tried for a week before wising up to her cheating. My soon-to-be ex is still in the fog, but it's her decision. She needs to live with it. 2. Do lawyer up with an experienced family law attorney who is reasonable. I can't say enough of the person who took care of me. Understanding that this is what I want versus reality was important in converging to the end. I don't have any crazy ridiculous fees as I did a lot of the prep and avoided hours and hours of back and forth and this was able to be settled rather quickly. 3. Do lean on friends and family for support as much as possible. 4. Working out, exercise is key to keeping your mental health. I hit the weights a month after D-Day, and I'm starting to reap the benefits and that confidence has been helpful to get across the finish line. 
five, get into individual counseling and talk with someone. This has helped me tremendously. Six, I realized this from all the posts I read, but the cheaters' decisions were all on them. I heard it all from my soon-to-be ex-wife. I was in roommate, I love you, not in love, our marriage went so wrong, I worked too much, blah, blah. Truth be told, now that I know the timeline, our marriage went wrong after she invited someone into her life that was feeding her lines to stroke her ego and give her extra attention, and she had to put up walls and make me the bad guy to justify this in her mind. Sure, she may have been stressed from kids' day-to-day -day life in a long-term marriage, but not communicating to her husband and confiding in a two-time divorce, cheater, with no moral compass, is all on her, and a recipe for disaster. The exciting final chapter of Captain Sacknut's Freeman Day, Cheese Five-Year Plan, Sid Affair Partner, is yet to be written, but poor choices carry consequences. That is all I will say on the matter. Again, thank you to everyone. I still have a lot of work ahead, but also many adventures in this new chapter of my life. I hope I can return the favor to anyone who needs it. Please reach out if anyone needs a helping hand. I am here. Update. Well, the saga of AC is coming to a close in the next few months, but the hits keep on coming. It was informed to me recently, my cheating soon to be ex had also cheated on her previous fiance with a married man. This was a couple years before we met. The fair partner met his fate in an unfortunate fatal car crash. I never knew this until now. Just goes to show the empty hole and the cheater never gets filled. As those of you who followed my story, I've felt tremendous guilt about my role in the marriage, but this revelation hits home nothing I would have done would have changed my fate. Question. To those who are in the same situation, did you find out your ex had a cheating past? We have one comment from the community. Throw RA 8462574484 says, My soon-to-be ex-wife cheated on her then-husband to get out of her marriage. She told me this on our first date and let me decide. At the time, she was truly remorseful, but justified it because her then-husband was physically abusive. Fast forward, now I'm the bad husband who pushed her to cheat. Update. Has your ex pushed to still be in your life after divorce? Got a question for the group. My post history details the greatest emotional connection love story ever. <laughs> I'm not so far away from moving into my own place. As I have a couple of kids with my soon-to-be ex and also for legal reasons, I've remained in our marital house as this process has taken place. I have posted a couple other threads of the ongoing saga. Thankfully, the light is at the end of the tunnel for me soon. Obviously, I have to co-parent with my cheating ex and will be friendly for that. But I have been infirm in saying she killed our marriage and by default any sort of friendship. I have no room in my life for a lying cheater. She has, however, been insistent about wanting to be there for me, promising to help decorate my new house and keeping holiday traditions for the kids. Again, I remained firm in saying she torpedoed our relationship and wanted to replace me. So I'm simply giving her that wish and even gone as far as to say she won't be a welcome guest in my house. Has anyone had this happen with the ex wanting to hang around? I have to guess it's some sort of optic. If we are friends, the split can't be so bad. So far, a fair partner has not shown his face and she tries to hide it, but I know it's a matter of time before their greatest emotional connection gets to go live. I have no desire to ever be in the same room as them two anyways, but will remain outside the blast radius with popcorn when the whole thing goes up in flames. Thanks as always to this awesome group. It seems your soon-to-be ex-wife is trying to maintain some semblance of control over the situation or perhaps is grappling with her own guilt and remorse. It's also possible she is trying to mitigate her actions by keeping up appearances for the sake of the children or to be seen as the villain in this situation. Regardless of her motivations, you are absolutely right in setting firm boundaries and sticking to them. It's crucial to establish clear limits to protect your own emotional well-being. As for her past and present indiscretions, while it's indeed distressing, it further affirms that you are not the problem in your relationship. It reinforces the idea that her actions were solely on her own and not a reflection of your role as a husband. It's important to keep this in mind as you continue to heal. And you're right. The so-called greatest emotional connection she claims to have will likely be subjected to reality soon enough. Keep your distance and continue to focus on building a new, healthy life for yourself and your children. You've already shown immense courage and resilience in dealing with the situation. Keep your head up, continue to move forward, and remember that this community is here to support you along the way. Remember to take care of yourself and don't hesitate to lean on your support network. You're doing an excellent job navigating through these difficult circumstances. Stay strong and keep moving forward. Wishing you the best. Now for some community back and forth with Aproxy23. 
She's doing it for herself. It would absolve her partially from her guilt, at least in her mind. It would mean that the betrayal and hurt cannot be that big of a deal if you still let her be in your inner circle. Don't let her. The OP replies, Yep, I know she is always concerned with image management, constantly posting on social media, etc. I've been letting my social media dry up anyways for my mental health, but she is definitely not in my inner circle or have been sharing my thoughts, plans with her. A proxy 23 responds back, Do family and friends know about her cheating? The OP replies, Family, yes, but I don't know what she tried to sell them after the fact. They seem to want to rug sweep her daughter's behavior, but they know the facts. Friends, my friends, yes, some of hers know about the divorce, but she likely has been selling them her story. I'm getting the side eye from some of her acquaintances, but at the end of the day, they aren't my friends, and I could care less about their opinion. Update. D is for decree and other fun stuff. Hello, fellow members of the club nobody wants to be in. I just wanted to give somewhat of a final update for a while. I will still be active to give advice, but the time has come to move on to the next chapter of my life. It does still hurt to have to type this out and say goodbye to the life I thought I was going to have, but I have accepted change is necessary and full speed ahead. One of the last posts I made was below if anyone needs a recap, but the TLDR follows the standard cheater handbook. I think no need to fully cover. Wife Saga cheated, the unexciting inclusion, surviving infidelity. As of today, the official decree went out and I am no longer married. I also picked up the keys to my new house and will start the process to move ASAP. I did choose to take a buyout as I felt it was best to start fresh in a place of my own to make new memories and I really got lucky. I found a nicely kept up house, barely a minute away from my current home, huge fenced in backyard, wood fire pit, big garage and primo location. I also back up to a nature preserve and as I'm an avid outdoorsman biker, I have a gateway to my own little paradise. Some will ask why so close. Well, I want to be close to my kids because they need to know their dad is close by for when they need me. Thanks to the advice for this community, I kept my mind focused on what was important, started a workout program, and also dove headfirst into a new career opportunity that recently paid itself huge dividends. I've not bothered with old or seeking out a new partner and will likely enjoy the single life for a while. As for my ex and affair partner, I honestly have started to let go of that disaster. Whatever happens will happen and it's no longer my concern. And as someone eloquently said before, when someone gets with somebody who cheated on their spouse, they're getting someone who cheated on their spouse. I did my best as a husband and father, and it's time for someone else to appreciate it. Thank you for all the messages, advice, well wishes, and so on. My life has depended on this so much these past months when I didn't have very many close by to turn to. For those that are at the very beginning of this crap deal, please keep putting one foot in front of the other and surviving every day. I'm not an expert in life, but I'm also willing to lend an ear to those who need it. Good luck, y'all. Update. One month after decree. What a difference. Hello all. Wanted to give a quick update, especially to those folks who just went through their D-Day and are worried about what life may be like. I'm six weeks post-decree and I have moved into my new place a month ago, working like a madman to get it set up into my sanctuary. I finally have it well furnished and it feels like my home. My home. My kids have now been over many times and the rotation is working well. I've read many times here that kids are resilient, but until you see it firsthand, it is worrisome. I'm happy to report they're handling things pretty well, and we have our own fun at dad's house, and they have told me many times they love being over. As for me, it's initially being weird having some newfound freedom, but I found making to-do lists and daily, weekly, long-term goals is helping a lot. I was initially sad, but keeping busy keeps that away. I'm focused on self-improvement at the moment. I have thought about putting myself back on the scene, but truthfully, I have no interest. So I'm keeping focused on home improvement, fitness, and my kids. Someone commented on one of my posts that getting out of the house was like being underwater and coming up for air, and they were right. As for the cheating ex, I kept it cordial, but that's it. No sign of the greatest emotional connection affair partner yet. What the F? But who cares? I'll just say tonight I sat outside, had a few beers and a cigar, and enjoyed the peace and tranquility of my property, and thought getting the heck away from the situation my ex put me in was the right thing. To those at the beginning and doubting leaving, I get it. It's the toughest thing and heartbreaking and a kick in the junk. But making the decision to eject a cheater out was the only right decision and I only feel with time it will get better. Cheers everyone. Update. Almost six months past divorce. Moving forward. Hi all. I'm almost to the six month mark past divorce and I'm nearly to the yearly past D-Day. It's been cathartic to post but I know a lot of folks have followed my journey, commented, messaged, given hope, etc. And like many others, 
posted along the journey to give the unfortunate new folks here some ray of light that despite the darkness you have stepped in, there is another side. I hope I can continue to help in whatever small way I can to anyone in need. I greatly appreciated the support I got, and in kind, would always love to return the favor. On that note, six months past D-Day, and there is a lot of positive news. My house is furnished and a home. My kids are comfortable in the routine and love coming over and have made some neighborhood friends. I'm beyond thankful that the little ones managed this process so well, and they just understand there is dad time and mom time, and no complaints or tears. Outside of them being here, I have immersed myself into a crap ton of home improvements. The house I moved into was occupied by an older, divorced gentleman, and some stuff got left to the wayside, but I took it as an opportunity to make it my own. Along with that, I furnished a home gym in my house with everything I need and can say I'm getting my workouts and boxing in four times a week and getting my body back to where it needed to be. Through this whole ordeal, I went through a major career change internally to where I work and somehow managed to not mess anything up, but instead have gotten kudos. I've kept my situation private, a raise, and plenty of exposure to get my career trajectory moving up. Yes, I still struggle daily with mental health and focus, but I manage it with therapy and workouts, and things are getting better. I think less and less of my ex each day, and each small step is a relief. As for her, well, she's still in La La Land, but I can only say we co-parent decently well. I gray rock the heck out of her. Let's be friends. But keep it strictly to kids, and it's been cordial. I'm sure anyone who has followed my story has wondered about the saga of OMB. All I can say is the world's greatest love story hasn't gone live, but my kids made me aware recently he has been around in a small capacity. I have to laugh a little as it's now six months past D-Day and they are still sneaking around. All great hallmarks of a long-lasting, trusting relationship, guaranteed to stand the test of time. I've come to terms with that whatever is going to happen will happen, and at this point, I'm lucky to be away from a person that is willing to lie to their most trusted partner's face and not feel an ounce of remorse, and I have a solid chance at building an even better life than before. Good riddance and good luck.